Your Excellency and dear brother, President Paul Kagami, Excellencies, former presidents, amongst us today, Excellency Chairperson of the AU Commission, Excellency Dr. C.D. Old, and Excellency Carlos Lopez, Honor Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen. On behalf of the government and people of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, and indeed on my behalf, I have the honor to extend to you all a warm welcome to Addis Ababa for the AIS AU ECA joint annual meeting of the African Ministers of Finance, Planning and Development. First of all, I would like to recognize in, ap in appreciation the organizers, the African Union and the UN Economic Commission for Africa and all others who participated in the preparation of this essential forum. Your Excellencies, the, the chosen theme for this year's conference, Implementing Agenda 2063, Planning, Mobilizing, mobilizing and Financing for Development, provides extraordinary meaning to all of us at this particular time. I believe you concur with me that our gathering here today is not only aimed at discussing and setting the groundwork for the implementation of Agenda 2063, but also to agree a common position as Africa as we take up our agenda in the upcoming Financing for Sustainable Development Conference that will be held this year here in this capital. Furthermore, since we are very close to the deadline of the Millennium Development Goals, we can also use the outcome of this conference as a major input to reflect our comprehensive views on the next set of post-2015 goals. As all of you are aware, Agenda 2063 has been recognized as a logical continuation of recent developments in Africa with renewed and re-energized efforts to catalyze development and strengthen African integration and unity. Indeed, Agenda 2063 guiding principles are continually of actions, drawing appropriate lessons, building upon what has worked in the past, and making every effort to do these things to do better. I am genuinely convinced that Agenda 2063 is expected to be a source of inspiration for development of national and regional sustainable development plans. It represents a collective effort and an opportunity for Africa to regain its power to determine its own destiny. Honorable ministers, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, financing a, trans a transformative development agenda will, will require substantial level of resources. To do so, it is imperative that available resources are used more effectively and strategically to catalyze additional financing from official and private sectors. And this is where the Global Financing for Development Agenda aligns well with the Africa 2060 revision. We have mandated ourselves to attain our development goals through our own resources in Agenda 2063. I am very sure this is possible. And I say it again, it is possible. It's well known that Africa has untapped dom domestic resources, public and private, that would be sufficient to meet the needs for Agenda 2063. If we want to sustain the remarkable economic growth recorded in the continent over the past decade, increased reliance on domestic resources is absolutely necessary, and domestic resource mobilization should get the first priority and greater attention in our discussion here today and then after. However, improving domestic resource mobilization is not an easy task, and so we will meet a need to step up efforts to finance our own development. The solution requires an integrated policy framework that changes existing patterns 
and sets a clear vision to mobilize and effectively utilize diverse sources of finances. The potential for increased domestic revenue mobilization is enormous, especially considering that the current level of taxation. Tax as a share of GDP has increased only marginally over the recent years, and many countries are still recognized a ta regarding a tax ratio of less than 10 percent. Poor tax administration and the limited tax base are key challenges that Africa faces. Despite the reforms in this area adopted across Africa and significant progress having been made in the implementation of such development policies within economic frameworks, there is still much to be done. Domestic resources mobilization in the form of private savings is mainly hampered by lack of access to financial services and institutions in rural areas. In our continent, large parts of the population have limited access to financial services. They are considered too poor to be able to save money and too risky to lend money to. Though what is called inclusive finance, experience in my country shows that rural communities can save enormously, enormous amount of money if they are given access to financial institutions and services. However, sustainable development cannot be accomplished through microfinance alone, as the chairperson of the commission said. Therefore, we must all continuously search for new opportunities that meet the evolving financial needs of the bottom of the economic pyramid. At this juncture, I would also like to say we in Africa, we have a responsibility to take care of illicit financial flows from our continent. Honorable ministers, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, while we should minimize dependence on external aid and focus on domestic resource mobilization, it is acknowledged that for some countries, official development assistance is still the largest source of external financing, and it is critical to the achievement of the development goals. Therefore, in the, co in the context of the financing for development discussions, we must place our partners to meet their ODA commitments and provide timetable to do so. They should also focus more on those that need it most and improve its effectiveness, especially in getting behind country plans. For us to meet Agenda 2063, we should place for an increased allocation of ODA to infrastructure, which is highly need and sustainable energy, agriculture and agro-processing, and sustainable industrialization, as well as support for enhancing domestic resource mobilization. I would also note that the important contribution to Agenda 2063 and the achievement of the state sustainable development goals of mutually beneficial South-South and triangular cooperation. While South-South cooperation is clearly distinct and triangular co and, and complementary to ODA flows, it also has a key role to play in our growth and, and transformation goals, as it often focus, focused on areas such as infrastructure, technology transfer, and experience sharing. We should encourage this further. Honorable Ministers, achieving a transformative agenda 2063 requires the mobilization, mobilization of resources from the private sector as well. The domestic private sector ranges from individual farmers up to companies. If, if this is able to thrive, it can have positive development impact on families and communities as they enhance their income through improvements in productivity and gaining access to markets and on the state through taxation. The international private sector can especially help with transfer of technology, enhancement of skills, or working jointly with public entities to deliver infrastructure, for example. So we have to make sure that private 
investors help move Africa forward towards the aspirations set out in Agenda 2063. We can provide incentives nationally, regionally, and internationally for more responsible behavior by business to staff and the environment, for appropriate tax payments in countries they work, and for global consumers to demand more ethical products. We also have to recognize that Africa is, of course, situated in a global system. For us to achieve the proposed Sustainable Development Goals and the Africa 2063 Agenda, the global system needs to change. We should press together for an LDC-focused trade package as the 2015 WTO Ministerial, including additional full duty-free, quota-free access, action on non-tariff barriers, and further aid for trade. And we should press the international financial institutions to allow African countries greater voice on their boards. The expert group has deliberated on this for two days and came up with proposed African position on the means of implementation. And I hope this gathering will approve it as African position so that this guides and help our negotiators to speak as one voice. Honorable ministers, distinguished delegates, we must not forget the need to monitor early on financial flows for efficient utilization and mutual accountability. And we, so we must invest in the required monitoring mechanisms. And in this long-term paradigm, it is crucial that we learn what has been achieved, identify obstacles to progress, what remains to be done, and strengthen the path for effective implementation in a timely manner. We, sh we should also continue to voice our needs and desires as one and call upon the international community to support African initiatives, taking into account the specific needs and concerns of the continent. Distinguished delegates, we, those gathered here, are responsible for enabling all Africans to achieve their full potential through a clear set of objectives and visions. In conclusion, I would like to reiterate the Ethiopian government's eagerness to support this initiative, and that is at the full disposal of the continent for the achievement of Agenda 2060, as we are always in frontline support of Africa development and transformation initiatives. Thanking you for your kind attention, I now have the pleasure of declaring this conference officially open, and I wish you a very fruitful deliberations. Thank you very much indeed.